Fellow Railroad fans, welcome to Vintage Road and Rail, and welcome to a, another video review. Uh, today's video, we're going to be looking at this uh, Walther's Train Line Flyer Express Fast Freight Ready to Run train set. So I've uh, printed out a little bit of information about it, uh, much of which we'll find here on the box, um, but it makes it real easy to kind of go over it step by step once printed out. Um, so as you can see this set is uh, BNSF so that's our Burlington Northern Santa Fe and it's also available in CSX and Canadian Pacific. Uh, now this is a GP 15-1 locomotive. Uh, you've already looked at a CSX and a Norfolk Southern of this locomotive in previous videos which I'll link to at the end of this um, but there's also three others available as well uh, the Canadian Pacific uh, and I'm trying to remember Canadian National and I think Union Pacific are the other ones um, but anyway so this is a complete ready to run train set and if you go to walthers.com it has a retail price of $239.98 and the average price that I was able to find uh, online was $199.99 and I looked at uh, Train World, Amazon and a handful of other places and most of them seem to be that price. Uh, the cheapest price for this set I was able to find was $179.99 and that was at um, Hobbytown. Uh, they had this set, I believe it was the CSX version that they had though, uh, for $179.99. Okay, so just kind of move forward with what's going to be included, and we'll go over this again quickly when we look at the box. Uh, but it says it's a hobby quality all-in-one set, built for years of fun. It comes with um, power lock track, so it's not going to have your normal track like, say, Bachman's Easy Track or your Atlas True Track or something like that. Um, and the power lock, if you're not familiar with it, it's been around for a long time. It was put out by Lifelike and in Walther's got it when they bought out Lifelike. So that track will have nickel silver rail, brown ties, and a gray row bed. Uh, simple and easy to put together. There's no rail joiners, which that I like. So it has 14 sections of track. So it would have enough track to make a 38 by 45 inch oval. And you can expand it any time. And as I already mentioned, it comes with a power GP15-1 locomotive with operating headlight. It comes with three cars, uh, a matching wide vision caboose, a 53-foot Norfolk Southern uh, gondola, and a 50-foot Conrail insulated boxcar. And according to the information, it comes with uh, Protomax metal knuckle couplers. And it's got a power pack with speed control, um, a setup guide, and complete operating instructions. So before opening this set and after looking at the boxes I just want to mention a few pros and cons that I had noticed before even looking at the set. Um, metal wheels is a pro, knuckle, metal knuckle couplers is a pro, and having nickel silver track is a huge pro for me uh, as well as those metal wheels. Um, a couple of cons though, not DCC ready and the track, while it's, from looking at it in the past, it's a pretty nice track. It's got limited expansion, and I feel it's a bit overpriced. And that's just kind of my quick observation before even opening this box cons. All right, so let's uh, start kind of getting into this. So let's kind of go over the box here. Now, real quick, this was sold to me. I got this really cheap. I got this probably about the same price as one of these locomotives. And it was sold to me new open box. So because of that it was listed as used but the seller tells me that it was has never been run so we'll find out when we get in there if he was telling me the truth or not. Alright so let's lay this down here and let's come off of the tripod for a moment. All right, and so we have our built to last complete starter set and our nickel silver track. There's nothing on the top or the bottom, 
but we can see here connect easy with this power lock track and here is our controller and it has get a bit of a glare going on there the re-railer so it makes it easy to put your cars on and then you can see here where it looks like this has been opened but everything seems to look really nice these are our cars and caboose and it mentions some expansion that you can do all right now if I can get this back up I'm gonna flip over there we go all right, a little bit more of the same here. I'll just pan down slowly and let you take a look at that. And that's pretty much it as far as the box is concerned. So let's go back on the tripod here. And let's adjust it down a little bit. And let's go ahead and open it up. So I'm going to get a handy dandy box cutter and just break this tape and then we're going to flip it over so that everything don't fall out I really like this case and I've got a train set uh, a couple of them actually from Athern I believe it was yes Athern that come in a case just like this that has like a little carry handle that you can't really see the way I'm holding it right here which makes it real easy to store and move it around. Alright, so when we open it up, we've got this protective plastic here that does not want to move. Alright, so we've got this layered in here. And so we've got our circle of track. We've got our locomotive. We've got our power supply and our controller. And we're going to go over this a little bit more. And then we've got our easy to run starter set. And I thought it said it came with a full color something. I ain't seen a full color anything. Maybe it's in here. So let's lay that to the side. And we'll flip this over and let this kind of drop out. And no full color guide. A fib. And here is the other half of the circle of track. Our 50 foot box car, 53 foot gondola, and our caboose. All right, so let me turn off the uh, video for a moment and get all of this out of its packaging and get the packaging out of the way. And then we'll take a close, closer look at each piece in this track. And then we'll stop again and we'll get it all set up on this table here and we'll give it a test run and see what we think of it. And also too, I want to test our coupler height and test our wheel gauge. So we'll, I'll do all that off camera at some point and let you know how that turns out. All right, so give me one moment and I will be right back. I've got everything unboxed and I've got the box sitting off over here to the side and Everything, you can't see it because you're just looking at a blank table for the moment, but everything is off here to the side of the camera. And while I was unboxing everything, I just took a moment and I did check the wheel gauge and I checked the track gauge and I checked the coupler height. And we will go over all of that in just a few moments as we go through. So let's start looking at each component one by one. And then once we're done with that, We'll stop the video, I'll get it all set up, and we'll see how it runs. Alright, so we're going to start with the controller and the power supply. And the power supply is just one of these standard wall warts. Plug this into the wall, plug this into the controller. If you've seen one wall wart, you've seen them all. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now, the controller itself, though, I actually find kind of interesting. It's very basic. There's nothing really to it. Uh, this is it here. You've got a speed control. You've got an on and off. You've got a direction. And when you want to turn it on, you just... And you hear that click. And now it's in the on. And as you turn, the faster you're going to go. And this is going to be your direction switch. 
Now I found that if you're wanting to go forward, put your locomotive to where that it's pointed this way. So it would be going from your left to your right. Uh, if you do it that way and then you hit reverse, it'll go backwards. If you flip it, then this will be forward and this will be reverse. Not always 100% that way, but most of the time that's what I find. And then on the back here, we got our plug-in for our wall wart. We've got our two leads for our track power, and we have our two leads to hook up AC accessories, or some accessories rather, it's got 16 volts DC. And I find that this is a really nice power supply, at least as compared to what you get with Bachman. Don't get me wrong, there are many, many power supplies out there that are way better than this. But for what, you, what comes with a basic train set or a starter set, this is really nice because one of the complaints that I have got with Bachman's uh, controller that comes with their train sets, or at the very least their basic train sets, is they eliminated the accessories. You don't have the accessory hookup capability. You can plug it up to the track, then you can plug it up to the power, and that's it. I uh, understand they may have done that for some cost-cutting reasons. Maybe they did some surveys and found that nobody really uses it. But it's nice to have that as an option, you know, just out of the box so that someone, if they wanted to hook up a couple of lighted buildings, they could easily do so. Uh, the other thing that we have is the leads that go to the uh, track. So this right here will go to your power supply and these will go to the track. Now this here is a point where it's not something that if I was taking points on or off for something I would deduct points but I think they could have done like Bachman and give you a nice little connector to make it real easy. Uh, and I'll show you why here in a second. And we're going to kind of move over to the track. But to tie it together, we'll start with the re-railer, which has the power. So you can see here, this provides the power to each track. And then you just slide these little ends onto each of these. And it's a little bit fiddly to do. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but I think if they had made plug for it. It could just go right on there and you're done. Kind of like what Bachman does. Uh, so anyway, but this is what your re-rail looks like. And I'll show you one of the curved pieces here. This is it here. And you notice the ends of these tracks looks a little different than what you normally see um, with how this goes on. And it does have a unique connection. You notice there are no rail joiners. And that's because the power goes from one of these to the other through these little contacts here. Now because of that, this is a little bit tricky to connect and disconnect these uh, pieces of track. But what I have found is once you get them connected and connected right, they're not going nowhere. I would venture to say they probably connect better either than, even than... Um, uh, K, uh, Katie's uh, HO and N scale track. Uh, I find Katie to be a good balance. It holds together well, transmits electricity from track to track really well, and very easy to connect. But if you want it to hold together, <laughs> can't get much better than these. And so the way you connect them is a little bit different too. Most things you just connect like, you know, straight on and make sure everything lines up. But here, you line these up and then you just kind of trying to keep my hands out of the way. You can see I'm kind of fighting it a little bit. And it's harder to do in front of the camera. Come on. There it goes. Connects. And then you still want to check it and make sure everything is good and smooth. You're not going to generally run into the issue that you have with your uh, say your Atlas or your Bachman track where you ride up above the rail joiner. But what you can have is right here, it don't snap in all the way. And so these tracks will be misaligned. It'll, this direction instead of up, misaligned that way. And so you'll hit this rail. 
And then to un to disconnect them, you just kind of got to get a hold on them and you push up this way and then down this way. Like, and try not to wiggle them. Like that. Uh, <laughs> like I said, it's not the easiest, but it holds well. And that is the track. And my only real complaint, oh, and by the way, it's code 100 track from what I can tell. It doesn't say on the box or anywhere else. Uh, but everything I've been able to tell looks like Code 100 track. Uh, but the biggest gripe I've got with this track is that it's very limited as to what you can get. Obviously, flex track is out of the question because of the rigid road bed. But even just the number of different types of switches or turnouts, uh, radiuses of curve, things of that nature, there's a lot less of it than you get even than in the Bachman and certainly with, you know, what's available with Atlas or Pico or anybody like that. Um, but I also can't really blame Walthers for going with their own in-house brand of track for a starter set. I'm guessing the assumption is if you're going to get serious with a layout, you're not going to probably stick with this. Now, that being said, if all you're doing is a 4 by 8 layout, there is enough available that you can build a full 4x8 layout no problem but if you're really wanting to get intricate with your track work and just do all kinds of different stuff with like a basement or a railroad empire in your basement you're going to need to switch to something else anyway enough about that so now let's move over to the locomotive and rolling stock so this is our wide vision caboose it's BNSF and we'll just give a quick tour. We've got our smokestack here. We have no glazing for the windows. It's just open. Um, and that's okay with a basic set. And we got our brake wheel and our uh, ladder here to get up onto the roof. Again, very basic as far as detail. And on the bottom here, we've got metal wheels but you'll notice that they have plastic axles. So this is a point where I can see cutting a little bit of cost by going this way, but I think I would have been a little bit more impressed since they went with the Protomax couplers. Go ahead and give us Proto wheels as well. Um, I, I just think they would last a lot longer because these axles can warp. Now I do like that you can use a standard screw to uh, get the uh, trucks off so that makes it easy for maintenance so speaking of maintenance both couplers were at the correct height and the trip pin cleared so what it didn't hang up and our wheels were engaged so that's all good good to know and here's our 50 foot insulated boxcar it's a conrail and again just very basic on the detail. Everything is molded in, but it looks good. We've got our brake wheel already installed. And just very basic underframe detail. And with this one, our wheels were engaged. And the same with the cup, uh, couplers. Their height was correct. And the trip pins cleared. So all was great there. Now, let's move over to the 53-foot gondola. This is a Norfolk 7. Again, with your basic molded in detail, looks good. Unlike the other two, the weight seems a little bit light on this one, so that may be something to keep in mind. But otherwise, looks really good. Again, pretty light on the detail. Now, with this one, the wheels were engaged. But I did find, and you may be able to see it, I don't know if you can, that you can see that it has some wiggle. I did find that the coupler height was just a tad low. And it's more that it's sagging. And because of that, not only is the coupler height a little low, and it is on both ends, but this trip pin catches. And just to kind of illustrate, if you're not familiar, what I'm talking about. When you set this on your track, 
your trip pin should clear this little metal guy right here and it did not and the reason it didn't is because the coupler is sagging now when I pushed it over it looked like it was in gate or you know the coupler height was correct and at first it tricked me it wasn't until I looked at it again I was like oh wait a minute but it is indeed just a tad low but it should be easy to fix and I think my next video I'll do will be adjusting this coupler height so keep an eye out for that now I'm not going to cover too much on this locomotive because I've got two other videos I've done on this. But its wheels were engaged and its coupler height was correct and the trip pin cleared. No problem there. But, got a little bit of styrofoam on there. Like the last uh, GP15-1 that we looked at, my Norfolk Southern, horns broke off and I was able to confirm this set had never been opened all that was opened was the outer box everything was still taped up and everything had never been touched so this is brand new and like my Norfolk Southern the horns broke off and just lay in in the uh, in the styrofoam so that's two out of three of these GP15s that I own that have done that and in my comments of the GP15, the Norfolk Southern one, I didn't go back and look for the CSX, but others had mentioned that they had run into a similar problem and they just glued them on. And that's what I'm going to do with this. Just get a little dab of glue and put those back on. If that, I may just put them in a little small Ziploc bag that I've got, parts bag, put it in the box, and there it sits, and just not even worry about it. All right, so that's a look of everything. So really, I'm not, in this review, I'm not really going to deduct points, but if I was going to deduct points for anything, it would be that broken horn and those two couplers being low, and that is it. Um, we're going to set it up here in a minute and let it run around the track and just see how it does, see how it looks, and while it's doing that, we're going to go over a couple of things um, about the pros and cons, some things maybe I might like to see uh, type things. The only, like I said, the only negatives I give it's what I mentioned about the horn and those couplers, but I do think that there's room for maybe some constructive criticism, and we'll go over that. And real quick, this was the paperwork, and for anybody that hasn't looked, versus tearing down the locomotive and looking, they give you a, a diagram. So this is not DCC ready, but it does have a board in here, so you could very easily make this a DCC locomotive. Might be a little tricky to get sound, but if you just wanted light motor control, take you 10 minutes. A little bit of soldering and you're done. All right, well, give me just a moment to set up and we'll see how this runs. Hey, I just wanted to cut in here real quick and show you what I was talking about uh, to look out for when connecting this track. And I'm gonna try to bring this in nice and close and you can see how there's a gap right here you have to make sure that that gap closes and snaps all the way because then you have, and you can feel it right here, the track is misaligned. It's not a lot, but if your train was going, going this way, it could derail right here. If it's going this way, you still could possibly derail, a little less likely, but you're going to hear that annoying sound. So just make sure that you just kind of snap it in. And there you go. All right, I'm going to now set all this up. So as you can tell, I'm off the tripod now and I've got everything hooked up. I've tried to go around and make sure that there's no areas where the track is not connected properly. It's a little easier to do with this than it is with the Bachman, um, but it still had a couple little challenges. Mainly I found it kind of, after a while, started hurting your hands because these edges would dig into your hand <laughs> so uh, just kind of be on the lookout for that so all right so we got it all here there's our locomotive our box car our gondola and our caboose and as you can see we're hooked up to the track and one of the things you will need to make sure is 
uh, you have this pointed the right way because there's only one connector unlike the Bachman the Bachman would have another on the other side so it wouldn't make much difference uh, but if I had turned this around the other end this would be on the inside and I'd have to come onto the track so just make sure you get that right and as you can see I've got that hooked up uh, it could be pushed in a little bit further but I'm not going to worry about it and then we've got our controller and then I've got it plugged into this surge protector right here all right so I've got it set to forward and if you have your locomotive pointed what you want to be forward and you this set to forward and it goes backwards just switch these out the red one moved to the black and the black moved to the red that's all you got to do all right so let's power it on and that's really nice that you got a light to confirm that you've got power because I guess you still get power even when you turn off the power. There it goes. Because if you don't get a light, then you need to first check and make sure this is plugged in all the way. Check that this is plugged in good. And if that all checks, then make sure, like if you're into a power strip, make sure it's turned on. And there we go. All right, so here we go. So we got a nice slow crawl, that's really nice. Very smooth on the acceleration as you turn this. Obviously it'll jerk if you... Nope, it didn't even jerk. It just smoothly went. Now this is not going to break speed records. This is its maximum speed. But as you can see, we've got a front headlight. I like it's got kind of a golden color to it instead of a, that bright, harsh white light. All right, let's bring it back around. We'll bring it to a stop. And we're going to put it in reverse. Then we'll see how she does backwards. And you can see that once I gave it just a tad of throttle, it wasn't even enough to move it, that backup light comes on. Running nice and slow in reverse. Very smooth. And that's max speed in reverse. And let me check one of these. And they're okay. Let's back up here. Let's go forward again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to let this run in for about 10 minutes or so each direction and while it's doing that I'm going to kind of compile a bit of a pros and cons list if you will as to what I thought of this train set and while I'm going over that I'll put this back on the tripod so you can just kind of watch it go around you know make a few laps here. I mean it's just your basic oval track so there's not going to be a whole lot to it. I've uh, let this break in just a little bit. I run it at 50% power, only about 10 minutes forward and 10 minutes back, and right now I'm running at about 25% power. Uh, but while it was doing its break in, I sat down and just kind of made some notes as kind of the final thoughts, if you will, as to what I think of this train set. Uh, so I've set the camera to where you can pretty much see it for the most part, just going here in a slow circle. So as a refresher, the retail price of this is about $240. That's when not on sale, going to walters.com. Average price I was able to see online was about $200. And I've seen it as low as 180 
And the only place I saw that at was at my local hobby town. Um, so with this set, I found two issues uh, with the gondola. The A and the B end, the couplers were a little bit low and need to be adjusted. And that will be my next video. And the other issue was the same as that Norfolk Southern GP15 one that I did a few videos ago. The horns had broke off. So those are just quality issues. Not a big deal there. Uh, pros, locomotive runs great. Uh, the cars have pretty good weight. It comes with metal Protomax couplers. It does come with metal wheels. Unfortunately, they got plastic axles, but at least the wheels are metal. And because of that, they free roll. You just give the car a little bit of a tap, and it'll go all the way around the, the layout practically, or the, this loop. Uh, and it comes with nickel silver track. Now, a couple of nitpicks um, with the track. While it is nickel silver, there is limited options. Like I said, if you're just going to build a basic 4x8 layout, it'll work just fine. But it's not going to do much use for you if you're going to want to expand to a railroad empire or to build a fairly complicated layout. Uh, but again, that's a nitpick because I can't blame Walthers for providing their own track you know, that they manufacture and sell in a basic, ready-to-run train set. Uh, another nitpick, metal wheels and axles. And the third nitpick and the final one is I think a couple of extra pieces of straight track would be nice just to make this a little bit longer. But again, those are just kind of nitpicks. Uh, two cons, it's not DCC ready. And I find the price to be a bit of a con, especially the retail price of $240. Um, if you can get it at the lowest price that I found, I think that would be closer to right. Uh, so with that being said, and keep in mind, all of this is just my personal opinion. And in my opinion, there's a couple of ways that this could be fixed. Uh, fix one, as configured, sell this between about $150 and $160 and I think you're great. The average price of $200 that I saw, you know, at places like Train World and such, I think that if it had a DCC ready locomotive, not DCC, but just ready, you could put your own chip in, and if it had the metal uh, proto wheels, and maybe a couple of extra pieces of track, I think then it might be worth a couple hundred bucks. I, I think we would we would be good there. Now, to be worth the 240 retail price, which of course then its retail price would be higher, probably more like 280. But to be worth the 240, it would need to be the above things I mentioned: DCC ready, having proto wheels, a couple more pieces of track, and I think an additional freight car. Uh, the argument could be made for two additional freight cars, but I think with having proto max couplers and proto wheels that makes the train car a bit more expensive and I think in that case you know it'd be worth the $240 uh, now again uh, the issues I found can't really be argued with that I mean the broken horn is a broken horn couplers are not at proper height but the pros and cons and nitpicks and the fixes those are just kind of my personal opinion someone else may have a different opinion you may have a different opinion uh, but as far as what my rating is I would give this a solid A. I would, I would recommend it. Even though I feel it's a little bit overpriced, I do think it is a good starting point. Would make uh, a great Christmas gift, birthday present, or if it's for yourself, you're just looking to break into the hobby and you just want to quickly and easily get into it without a lot of fuss, uh, this, will do, this will be a great start for you. I, I think so. Uh, another minor nitpick that I didn't put in there, but I'm just looking at, is this cable. You know, these wires that connect from the controller. I mean, right here, that's about as long as it gets. I think two or three times longer would be nice, but again, that's just me being nitpicky. Uh, so anyway, that pretty much wraps up this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed taking a look at this train set and me going through pretty much step by step everything that comes in it and taking a look at it and you know some of the extra steps we took 
you know, looking at coupler height, wheel gauge, stuff like that. Uh, but if you did enjoy it, uh, do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next video. Well, all right, Model Railroad fans, until the next video, happy Model Railroading, guys. Take care.